Eric Griffin's on his podcast recently complaining about the views, complaining about his engagement, complaining about his metrics. And for me, I don't know about you guys, but for me, right, when a content creator starts complaining about their fucking metrics, starts complaining about their views, crying about the engagement, it's usually a sign that it's the beginning of the end. It's usually a sign that they finally realize that they're maybe not as big in their head as they are in fucking reality. You know what I mean? That maybe they might have to go and get a regular job. Maybe this content creation thing isn't for them. Because in my opinion, even on my little lowly level, it's always you. It's never the audience. It's never the audience. It's never the algorithm. It's never... um getting fucking shadow banned it's nothing to do with that if you have content that people care about and that's worth people's time they will make the effort to check it out there is no shadow of a doubt about that in my humble opinion so when you see content creators complaining about fucking views and engagement usually it's a reflection of their inability to create something worthwhile that people give a shit about in my humble opinion it's really harsh to say that i know some people don't like to hear it but that is the god honest truth if your content is shit and you don't make good enough content people aren't gonna check out what you do it's as simple as that really there is no other way around it and for whatever reason um you know eric sometimes thinks that he's i don't know worth more than what he's worth he should be getting way more views maybe he should he's been around for a long time anyway right he's been out here hustling fighting the fucking good fight being on rogan he's been on every fucking podcast he's friends of everybody has fucking red bar says and look at the level that he's at it's probably quite disappointing if you're fucking eric griffin and this is where you've ended up you know what i mean i would be annoyed if i was him also if this is where i fucking ended up at the, at the end of it all of that work all of that effort and then in the end what does it fucking amount for here are you doing your podcast with 70,000 subscribers and only having 4,000 views. I've got nearly 20,000 and I've got some episodes of this random show that get 4,000 views. He should be getting way more than I'm getting. So it's absolutely, you know, diabolical that that's happening. But it's probably a reflection of maybe his inability to connect with fans. Who bloody knows? Let me quickly find a clip here to play for you of him saying what he's saying and then we can continue. Bear with me one second whilst I get it to load up. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, exactly, Tony Tube. He went to the fucking Comedy Mothership. I f totally forgot about that. He went to the Comedy Mothership and he got, imagine, he got that gig of the Comedy Mothership through pure talent through being very good at stand-up comedy because people always say about Eric Griffin, he might come across like a bit of a Debbie Downer. He might be horrible in terms of content. He might be, you know, whatever he might be. But people always say that his stand-up is fucking excellent. I've heard many people, even in my stream, say, nah, actually, when it comes to stand-up, I've seen him a few times. People say he's actually really good at what he does. But for some reason, you know, it just doesn't seem to level up. Uh, yeah, that's, there it is. Here, I found it. Oh, and big up the fucking user. Big up the commentator for doing it also. You're an absolute G. Big up the chat merchant for being the guy to expose it. Who's this person? Uh, big up Spooky Sammy. Right? Spooky Sammy is the one that spooked fucking um, Eric Griffin. Big up Spooky Sammy. Over 71,000 subs and only 1,000 viewers. Something doesn't smell right. So I think Spooky Sammy is suggesting that maybe Eric Griffin paid for subscribers, which makes sense because Eric Griffin's got an old account. And maybe those older accounts, you know, a lot of those, are, you know, they probably pay for subscribers really early on. And maybe his subscriber count is actually reflective of how many subs he actually has. And now over time, as he's making more content on there, his views aren't really reflecting the sub number. So maybe that is reflective of it. I just, I don't think that to be the case. I just think over time, people just stop caring about him and stop checking at his channel. But anyway, let's check out Eric Griffin responding to that, um, you know, observation. Man. I, that's exactly how I feel. And only a hundred, you know, I just, I just don't know. I don't, I don't know. There it goes. You know what I mean? Dude, who you telling? Somebody in this chat just said, over 71,000 subs and only a hundred viewers. Who you telling, <laughs> man? I, that's exactly how I feel. I don't know. Where is everybody? <laughs> they just don't come live, you know? They'll watch it later. I mean, <laughs> they don't come live. They'll watch it later. I don't think so, brother. It's what, six days later, 4.3K. That is a pittance compared to his subscriber count. 
An absolute pittance. The, 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 the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> I mean, I about. Like, I don't the know. algorithm. Yo, Rachel best keep her job at fucking Target. You know what? For me, the, the thing that's annoying with these guys, personally, there's nothing wrong with having a job. There's nothing wrong with starting off small. There's nothing wrong with having low views and numbers. But it's these guys, they put so much of their self-worth in these numbers. Then instead of working to get the numbers where they want them to be, they instead take the cheat route. They take the shortcut. They buy the views. They buy the engagement. They buy the followers. And then they wonder down the line why it's not fucking reflective. Or maybe they forget. They buy the views and the fucking engagement of the followers and then they forget they bought them and then they're surprised they're not getting as many views as they'll get in the past. It's like, bro, you nuked your account. And if you know anything about buying views and stuff, what ends up happening basically from what I saw online is that if you buy views, you're usually buying them from accounts that don't exist, like accounts that somebody's made, like botted accounts. So people make botted accounts and then they flood those botted accounts to your channel or to your video to watch what you watch, right? Cool. But then... Those botted accounts get recommended your videos later down the line. But because they don't, they're not real people, they're not going to click back your videos again. So you'll have a big spike in one or two videos that you've actually bought views for. But then the subsequent videos won't have the spike because the people that were viewing them aren't people, they're bots, and they're not going to review your new content. So over time, it kind of fucks up your algorithm a little bit. It fucks up how your stuff gets fed out there into the into the public because that's how basically stuff catches on, right? Um, it kind of spreads around word of mouth. It becomes viral. You watch it, I watch it, they watch it, whatever it may be. And over time, um, your, your other videos get recommended to the people that watch your previous one. You know, a small percentage of them watch it. Then a smaller percentage, a smaller percentage, and it carries on, right? It carries on. But... If you buy views and it just ends after that one view that you've bought, obviously you're going to fuck up your account. But these guys don't know. They'd rather the short term hit. And I think a lot of them do do it. To be fair to them, I think a lot of them do it because it's very lucrative. From what BGL said um, when he was on the Fire and the Kids sub, you know, the guy's a fucking mess, but he did reveal some interesting things. BGL, I remember saying on the TFAT K sub thing during the AMA that essentially, I think somebody asked him along the lines of, oh, how does Brendan get all these sponsors for the Fire and the Kid when it's such a terrible show, right? And the numbers are so low. And I think BGL basically said that podcast sponsorships and ads, they kind of work like three months or like a year in advance or something, right? So essentially, if you bought your views this year, fucking July, um, and you make it seem like you're a 100,000 view account or channel, then you can negotiate a contract based on those numbers today. But then if over time you stop botting your views or whatever it may be, they still have to pay you for that year contract. You know what I mean? So you can have a year runway of of money coming in for views that don't actually exist or views that aren't reflective of your actual channel so he's basically been doing that like constantly like it's basically like you're spinning plates at the same time and hoping nothing falls so you but you bought views increase the numbers you go and negotiate a contract for your podcast you get the podcast con contract to reflect the views that you bought it and then you use that money to continue another year another year so essentially you're kind of like fronting that cash to give you more runway that's basically what he does so a lot of these guys bought views because the uh, uh because the um, incentive is high because the podcast industry clearly the business is very scammable right there's a lot of scamming that goes on in that business people finagle shit which is why people bought views so if the podcast industry would get the business in check and not make it so easy to scam maybe these guys wouldn't bought views but because it's so lucrative and it actually does pay in the in the grand scheme of things i can understand why they do it but i still think it's really 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 dumb it's like I don't think they let I don't think they allow people to go viral anymore. I don't think I don't think they're I don't think they're Oh okay, yeah. Even P09 Bala says Nick Mullen says they do it monthly. Um based on the numbers, hence why the Adam Friedland show didn't have them at the start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that, that makes more sense. So they basically do it in a month, a month in advance, whatever it may be, right? Cool. But you're still getting so that's what again, like I said, I think it incentivizes them to bot views. I'm sure if someone was smart enough, if somebody had the fucking analytical mind that I don't have or was good with numbers, I'm sure you could correlate. If you went back on the Friday in the Kid channel, I'm sure you could correlate days or episodes where suddenly the view spiked that kind of coincided with like 
the end of the month or the beginning of the month. Like maybe when you need some money or maybe the middle of the month or something. I'm sure you could find some correlation between some episodes suddenly having hundreds of thousands of views because he needed to secure a deal for a podcast sponsorship. I'm sure that's the thing that they all do, for sure, most of them. But I just think it's dumb because at the end of the day, your views aren't going to be reflective of your channel grow. And also, you don't actually really build a fan base that way. I'd much rather build a how I did. Like, honestly, like on this channel, if you look back to some of my live or videos from prior, like many years ago, I did my podcast. I sometimes get two views, 10 views on a two hour podcast. I'll be talking into the fucking wind, but I just enjoy doing it because it's fun. And now over time, I'll get a couple of hundred. I may get the odd thousand here and there. And obviously on my channel, it's obvious to see that the random show stuff is stuff that performs way better than my actual podcast, the XNO Zinger Show, which I clearly, you know, love to do way more than I love to do this because I've got like 600 of the episodes. But still over time, both things have kind of grown organically over time without me having to go and bot views. So later down the line, if when I end up getting a hundred thousand views and stuff you'll know that it's accurate of actually my channel's growth and it's not something that i've kind of injected in there just to kind of make myself feel good it's a really bizarre thing that they all do man but again i think it all has to do with comedians living in this weird comparison world that they have and you know the saying goes you know comparisons are fee for joy and it really is because they all feel like they're losers if they don't get hundred thousands of views but there's only there's so many podcasts out there only so many amount of listeners even if you get fucking a thousand views that's still pretty decent it's a very small niche not everybody likes a ha ha he he some people want to watch fucking cats some people want to watch people get beaten up and shit the fact that you're getting any amount of views should be a win in itself and also podcasting or making video content should be something supplementary something that you do on top of whatever you do nine to five ish in terms of your comedy whatever it may be but i guess these guys you know want it all letting like here you you know seventy one thousand people said oh you know what I I'm, I'm interested in <laughs> you weird, so awesome. boom and then YouTube goes okay I know these people are interested in you but we're not gonna tell them I'm like hey I'm here well we're not gonna really announce it we're not gonna get it to them because you know so it's like you have to pay for that you know what's funny Eric would play a really good Medea. Eric, even though, I don't know, like, I don't know what his mix is, if he's black or not, but Eric would play a really good Medea. He'd actually play a really good auntie in a movie. He'd really play a really good grandma if he, if he wanted to get into that comedic side of acting because he's got all the mannerisms of like a really sassy aunt boy you uh you know those kind of um american caricatures of like black women or black older ladies from the south he for sure fits that stereotype a little bit his lips his face even the way he's built you know what i mean he's built like fucking you know a bag of mashed potatoes you know what i mean like microwavable mashed potatoes he looks like he hasn't done a fucking single push-up in his entire life he looks like the kind of guy that when he bends over he bends over at the fucking at, at the waist you know what i mean like, a, like, you know those, those aunties where they spread their legs out and they bend like that? He looks like those kind of guys that bends over the waist and he's like, oh, oh, always moaning and groaning when he's picking up shit. <laughs> it's we. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You, your guess is as good as mine, man. But I've been building this up for years now. Um, four years so people go yeah they sub but they don't hit the notifications or they sub and they just they don't <laughs> when you start crying about shit like this is fucking over for you honestly if you're out there and you're making content and you've got one view keep doing what you're doing keep plugging away enjoy what you're doing and you know whatever make content for yourself for the most part that's what i do for the most part i just do this shit because i fucking find it fun if i was you know not making content i stumbled across me chatting shit and screaming into the microphone at 9 a.m in the morning talking about brendan shaw and laughing about the shit thing that he does i'd be fucking entertained i'd fucking love it so i make it personally just for me right and that's it and over time if you find an audience cool well done if you don't it's a great hobby i don't again i don't play video games i don't really play football too much i don't skate as much as i did before in the past i don't have many hobbies so if i can do this for fun then that's all amazing you know i mean that's fucking sensational that's a big win you got something to occupy your time you're not just sat watching terrible tv shows and shit every day that can be fun but over time it gets a bit boring so why not do it just as a fun thing to do but these guys it's always numbers it's always fucking money it's always ticket sales it's always that kind of bottom line they'll just do stuff for the hell of it which is why most of the podcast scene especially the comedic scene is fucking shit because no one's doing shit just for shits and giggles anymore they check in later or i i don't I, I don't get how it works either man i don't get how it works it's like when you see somebody on instagram you know 
Oh, okay. Pio Bear says, why are his Twitch numbers the same then? That's the thing that I don't understand. So he has a, he has a decent Twitch, right? So he, I, I didn't know he has a Twitch. Is it a Twitch account? So if he has a Twitch account, why is he worried? Because he, he makes a guaranteed amount of money from his subs over there on Twitch, right? So that's decent enough because you're getting subscriptions from these guys. Fair enough, the splits aren't the greatest, but still you're getting a guaranteed amount of splits from your fans over there on Twitch. That should be decent enough for you, especially if you're a comedian, on top of what you already do, um, going on tour, doing gigs and shit, you know, whatever it may be. But again, these guys, comedians, they want absolutely everything. They want the whole fucking world. But if he's getting four and a half thousand views on his fucking live streams and videos and shit, he's probably clearing about 2K a month, maybe a K a month here and there on top of whatever he makes on fucking Twitch with his subs. That should be good enough. Why is he fucking crying? Like legit, why is he crying? It doesn't make any sense really. You know what I mean? You've got a decent channel here going on. 32,000 followers. I'm not too sure how much that means in terms of um, uh, subs subscribers and shit. But let's say he's got half of those subscribers. Maybe he's got 15,000 paying subs. That's pretty decent. No? Well, what's, what's wrong with that? And what are, what are, these, what are these subscribe rates here? Uh, subscribe. How, how much, how much is, does, he, does he charge for these things? Let's see. Uh, $3.99. Come on, bro. He's got $3.99, $7.99, and $19.99. Like, he's doing okay. He's complaining about nothing, really. He's crying about anything. Like, you get paid to play video games on Twitch as a comedian on the side of whatever you do. That should be a win in itself. It's like, you know... Oh, Pio Bello is saying he gets 150 live viewers. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, the, the viewers aren't the greatest, but with Twitch, he gets a guaranteed um, amount of income every month from the subs on his channel. So, because it sounds like he's complaining about views, but he's not. It really, if you, if you listen deeply into what he's actually saying, um, you know, I feel like he's actually just complaining about fucking money. Go to like, uh, um, yeah, it's like a natural born killer. Eric Griffin always cries about something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you go to somebody's Instagram, like. Let's go to somebody's Instagram and I'll, I'll, I'll show you exactly what Look at him trying to justify why he's fucking failing by fucking getting somebody else as an example. Look, look, look. He's failing too. Sir, sir. It's not just me. She told me to do it. Sir, he did it too. Fucking Randall ass motherfucker, man. Concentrate on yourself, man. Work on yourself. Why are you pointing fingers at others? This fucking guy. So you go to like, like, like what's messy? So me Messi has like the most <laughs> fucking Messi, one of the most famous footballers in the world. You're comparing Messi's engagement or lack thereof or whatever he's trying to justify with your own. Uh, is this guy absolutely? Fu is this guy crazy? Followers on Instagram, I believe it is. You know, I believe. Um, yeah, the, yeah, he has the most followers. He has four hundred and ninety-six six million followers let's go to our website look and look at this okay so he has 476 million followers you go to this let's just go to one of his posts okay so this post has 8.6 million likes so i could say the same thing to him i could be like hold on a second 476 million followers and only 8.6 million likes no one's saying that about fucking Messi, you fucking dollop. Honestly, these comedians, the fucking hubris on these guys to compare his situation with Lionel fucking Messi is absolutely insane. Okay, fair enough. The one-to-one -one metrics between the likes and the comments are, isn't that great when you think about it in that respect. But come on, bruh. He's still getting a million. Fuck. Has... Eric Griffin got any content out there on the internet that totals up to a million? Probably not. This guy's a fucking loser. Likes? Something's fishy. That's just how it works. Nah, nigga. You're a fucking loser. That's what you are. That's how that works. It's like you're not... Eric might be a sly locale, you know. Now to come to think of it. He might be an actual, absolute locale. You're not... We're not allowed to, like, interact with... Or inform. Yeah, exactly, Bew. 
Uh, Messi should get 400 million, 450 million likes on every post then, according to Eric. Exactly. What kind of nonsense is this? As if your followers is ever a reflection on how many fucking likes you should get. How about if you've got two followers and you get 10 likes on your account? Does that mean then that you bought the likes? Huh? What about that then, Eric? You fucking ignoramus. Our actual followers. Hey, what's up? If they allowed that, this would be such a different experience, I think, for social media. But at the same time, I get it. The company is like, hey, we're providing a really great service. We're providing a service of a billion people that you could somehow interact with. So, hey, you know, you're going to have to pay to do that. I mean, you know, so, I mean, I get it. The comp company's got to make money. You know, look at that, you know. This one only, this one, you know, you, you know, you look at all this, you go, this guy has so many followers. Like, this one only has 4 million likes. So, that's like... What is that? Four million out of four? That's ten percent. One percent. Do maths on your own account, brother. Go and audit your own account. Better yet, go on Brendan Schwab's account and audit his account. Please do some social media auditing of fucking Brendan Schwab's account. Please do that. Then your head's really gonna shake. Actually, go on his Twitter to be precise. Go on Brendan Schwab's Twitter and do some auditing over there, and you'll be in for a fucking shock. Yeah, it's like your notifications don't even reach your whole audience. It's such a weird thing, man. But anyways. <laughs> Failure. Loser. I don't know how I feel about betting on the Special Olympics. It makes me feel weird. You would think. Bro, you bet on Special Olympics every day when you turn up to work with fucking Brendan Schaub on a golden hour. That's what some people say. That's what some people say. Some people say that you do that every single day by turning up to work with fucking Chris Lear and Brendan Shaw. But again, what do I know? Who am I? I'm just a regular, schmegular person. You know what I mean? You know what I mean?